Hi guys, this is GSM1.com and I'm here with a review of the ASUS Zenfone 5 ZE 620KL. I know it's a mouthful, but it's a mouthful of a phone. It has a notch at the top and it's part of the Zenfone 5 triplet. We've reviewed the Zenfone 4 uh, last year in the fall and it's already the end of spring and the Zenfone 5 is here. We've unboxed it. It's time for the review. This is the mid range, the high mid range phone from the series. The 5Z is the flagship, the light is the well lower mid range version. It's bigger and notchier and with more AI compared to the Zenfone 4. That's one of the first things I can tell you. Now, if you're wondering about the price tag, the phone should be priced at around $400 or even $450. Some countries even $399, which is not bad. Available in Midnight Blue or Meteor Silver, the phone has a pretty typical design. You can easily confuse it with maybe a Huawei P20 Lite on account of the notch but supposedly it's supposed to have a 90% screen to body ratio that's what asus is bragging about i'm not very sure about it more like 85 or 83 percent screen to body ratio the bezels are minimal but not as minimal as you think when you hear the crazy 90 percent still for a 6.2 inch phone it's crazy compact and it's probably the first 6 inch phone I can wield with one hand. I haven't said that often. I maybe said it about the Galaxy Note 8, but not very surely. Well, this is the comfiest 6 plus inch phone ever. Now, material wise, glass at the front, glass at the back, with the typical concentric circle pattern that ASUS products have. Metallic frame, of course, on point, and it measures 7.7 .7 millimeters in thickness and weighs 165 grams. By the way, the Huawei P20 measures 7.7 .7 millimeters and weighs 165 grams, so basically a very similar feel in the hand. It's comfy, it's got comfy buttons on the side, it feels reassuring in your hand. And uh, other than that, I will tell you that the bag gets smudged, but not as bad as many, many other glass phones. Certainly less than the Huawei P20 Pro. 2.5D glass, Gorilla glass, and a special uh, layer of... Uh, material something like a lacquer or something like that making it glisten this way excellent grip in spite of having so much glass very comfy experience premium materials so one of the best asus experience on phones over the past years we're done with the design the notch does not bother me for sure and now it's time to refer to the display a little bit so 6.2 inches it's a super ips plus panel this one here with a resolution of 20 to 46 over 1080 full hd plus and 550 nights of brightness plus there's a 96 percent uh, ntsc color gamut dci p3 support gorilla glass and a special blue light filter plus you can also use it with your gloves on with zero problems now the zenfone 4 was smaller at 5.5 inches this is certainly bigger at 6.2 inches i'm going to let the testing do the talking so we have a typical sample here, typical video sample, which is this one here. Let's check it out. One thing that annoys me is the lack of consistency. So here you have curved corners, top and bottom, and here we have a straight line in order to cover the notch. Anyways, the actual experience involves vivid colors, pretty good brightness. Nice contrast, I would say. Uh, the vivid colors are nifty, but they're inferior to an OLED, in my book at least. Wide view angles. And the uh, immersivity is rather so-so because of the lack of symmetry between the right side and the left side. So that's about it. Okay, contrast, okay, brightness, nice colors, and it's time to see what other things we have here for you. As usual, we put the screen under the microscope, and this is what we achieved. This is what the pixels look like under the microscope. RGB stripes pixels, and we also measure the level of brightness, and let's see how that panned out. Okay, so here we go. We achieved a top brightness of 491 lux units, which is pretty solid. It's uh, nowhere close to iPhone levels, but still rather solid, 491. Beats HTC U11, beats iPhone 7 Plus, and even the Zenfone 4, but closely, that one had the 485 lux. It's inferior to the Huawei P20 Pro, Galaxy S8, and iPhone 10. Now, if you want to go deeper within the screen settings, we have them here. You just go to display and we got brightness level, auto brightness, auto rotate, sleep, smart screen on. So you can extend the screen on time when you're looking at the phone and holding the device. Navigation bar options, so you can hide it and change the layout. 
okay and also the arrangement of the buttons there's display size font size font type led indicator lift to check phone and a bunch of tweaks you can tweak the blue light filter turn on it not turn it on now there's the color temperature slider with an auto mode there's screen color you can go with white standard or custom and here in custom you have hue and saturation not bad plus others notifications override do not disturb and strangely i did not find any way to hide the notch it hides automatically in some apps okay so with that being said i have to say that this is a this feels like a pretty solid screen in my book a slight bump up from the zenfone 4 time to talk about other things and when i say other things i'm talking about the processor got a pretty potent cpu here by mid-range standards qualcomm snapdragon 636 the zenfone 4 had 630 the gpu is the adreno 509 4 or 6 gigabytes of ram we have the 4 gigabytes ram version 64 gigabytes of storage of which you can use 52 micro sd card slot and also the experience was ultra fast look at those animations it's not uh, something on a fast forward level that's the way it works all the time even with updates even with a lot of apps that's simply the way this phone works it has fast animations and a special fluidity which may be aided by ai maybe okay so games also check out we got here dungeon hunter champions and riptide gp renegade it was a blast to play them on the screen it may not be an oled but it's still pretty entertaining so riptide gp renegade okay quick race and in spite of so much bragging about gaming you'll see that the phone is not actually adept at gaming i'm talking about future games because the gpu didn't score very favorably in benchmarks anyways let's enjoy riptide typical benchmark game you can set the graphical level all the way you want you can go all the way up to ultra levels things will look smooth nice frame rate lighting and so forth so it checks out when it comes to the gaming you also have the game genie option so you can record your sessions stream them to twitch or youtube and now it's time to see how we did the benchmarks so we have a bunch of screenshots here we have everything we got your antutu geekbench 4 and so forth so let me proceed this is antutu 6 good old antutu 6 in this one we beat the huawei mate 8 galaxy a8 2018 and the zenfone 4 scored below the nokia 7 plus and the iphone se in antutu 7 which should be here somewhere we were able to uh let's see beat the xperia xa2 and the motorola moto x4 but score below the nokia 7 plus again rest assured you'll see all of these benchmarks in the full text review in uh, geekbench 4 we scored in the multi-core subtest we scored above the motorola moto z to play galaxy a8 2018 and xperia xa2 as well as the xiaomi redmi 5 plus still below the iphone 7 and the nokia 7 plus again now uh, the gpu not very impressive and i'm talking about the slingshot test it should be here somewhere we have a lot of benchmarks people so uh let's see if we can find it okay slingshot should be here somewhere so in the end in slingshot 3.0 we beat the motorola moto x4 xperia x a2 once again below the nokia 7 plus and even the one plus two which is not impressive overall the phone can beat the galaxy a 2018 also the xperia x a2 and x a2 ultra but it cannot compete with the nokia 7 plus and the gpu a bit underwhelming did a bunch of temperature tests as well so let's see what happened there 38.8 degrees celsius were achieved in Riptide GP Renegade, the game you saw before, and when running the intensive benchmark GFX bench, 32.1 degrees Celsius, so in the end, no overheating, and that's always good news. Now, if you want to talk about the battery, it's a 3,300 mAh unit with fast charge and a special AI feature, AI charge. Five minutes of charging is two hours of talk time, and it also protects itself from being left to charge overnight extra unnecessary juicing on paper up to 22 days of standby up to 25 hours of 3g talk time up to 13 hours of video playback in reality well not exactly 13 hours of video playback for sure okay so we have here the screen on time and things like that so i have to say that uh, in the continuous hd video playback time the result we achieved was here we go looking for it 
it was 9 hours and 55 minutes of continuous HD video playback, which is just okay. It's by no means the full season of 13 Reasons Why, sadly. It beats the Xiaomi Mi A1, HTC 10 and HTC U Ultra, but scores below the Zenfone 4 even. Also the Zenfone 4 Selfie Pro, Huawei P10 Lite and iPhone 7, so could be slightly better. Now PC Mark is another test we did. Here the result is better, uh, this is a more intensive test, 9 hours 39 minutes, it's rather good because it beats the Galaxy S7 Edge, Galaxy Note 8 and the Asus Zenfone 4. Scores below Galaxy, no, scores below the Sony Xperia X82, excuse me, Nokia 7 Plus and the Xperia XZ1 Compact. Now when it comes to the phone's charging, that one was done in uh, 2 hours and 5 minutes, I expected something faster than that to be honest. It may be better than the Huawei P9 Lite 2017 and the Pixel 2 XL, but it's also inferior to many Samsung models. Now, if you want step-by-step -step charging, you should be aware that the phone offers uh, 5 uh, minutes of juice up up to 7%, 15 minutes is 17%, and 30 minutes is 35%, while 1 hour is 69%. Settings for the battery include Power Master, which is basically your way of tweaking the battery usage with performance, normal, power saving, super saving and custom, which lets you tweak the brightness and something else to activate, smart switch at a certain level, and as you can see, each of them adjusts CPU performance, brightness and a few other things. Battery optimization is of course here with recommendations on what to kill and what to leave alive, battery, detect, uh, battery draining apps detected, auto start manager, percentage and that's about it. I would say it's a pretty modest battery, it's good in PC mark, continuous usage, a bit underwhelming in charging and expected just a little bit more from the video playback time. Now on the acoustics front, good news, stereo speakers, so one at the bottom, one at the top, you will not cover the bottom one in landscape, luckily, a lot of holes here and uh, dual stereo speakers with amplifiers, high resolution sound, DTS support for headphones, audio wizard, 5 magnet speaker, 24 bit sound, all the goodies. Our test unit didn't include headphones sadly. This is the audio wizard section. You can go with stereo, mono or outdoor which is a very loud mode and here we have normal, custom, vocal, pop or rock and custom lets you tweak a few other things like bass, treble and five custom channels. I'm going to leave this on normal for now, plus of course the volume and DTX, DTX, no excuse me, DTS, DTS X, wow, that's a mouthful. Okay, so uh, let's also go to the Play Music, which is the pre-installed app. Asus no longer provides its own app for some reason and also no longer provides the equalizer in here. You actually have to do a little bit of searching to find it. And music, we have here some copyright free music, here we go. Okay, so conclusions, you just saw the outdoor mode in action and it really kicks, you can actually feel it, but the sound gets a bit weird when you activate it, it's a bit too much, like it's straining the speaker. Anyways, the experience was very loud, I love the bass here, to be honest, excellent, high notes, lots of vibration on the back side of the phone, and uh, once again, the outdoor mode is a killer, it can cover the conversation in a small room for sure. When you attach headphones, like I did, my own ear pods, you get great surround, there's also FM radio, which once again is hidden, you cannot find it here, uh, you should be able to find it here somewhere, here it is, FM radio included in the mix. At first I was tempted to say that it's not available, it actually is. We go to the gallery again, why? Because we have some decibel meter testing, this time more ample than usual. So, 87.9 decibels were achieved at the front and the back of the phone without the outdoor mode on. When you put it on, it's 90.5 decibels with the boost, the outdoor mode boost, and that's pretty impressive in my book. It beats Galaxy Note 8, Asus Zenfone 3, Galaxy S8, Huawei P20 Pro, scores below the Xperia L1, Nokia 5. The other test involves gaming in Riptide, and here we got up to, come on, 99 decibels, which was the standard result. And in the other one, with the outdoor mode on, we got as high as 102.6 decibels, it's crazy good. Fifth spot all time, superior to the Nokia 7 Plus, Galaxy A8 2018, but inferior to the Nokia 8. 
with the acoustics done and dusted, time to turn towards the camera. So, at the back we can find a dual shooter which feels familiar. It's a combo of 12 megapixel, 12 megapixel and 8 megapixel. This type of combo we also saw on the Zenfone 4, the same resolutions, 12 and 8. And the 12 megapixel one is a Sony IMX T363, 1.4 micron pixels, f1.8 aperture, 4 axis stabilization, LED flash, and 16 scenarios of AI detection. So as I said before, it's a combo of 12 and 8 megapixels and the 8 megapixel camera has a wide angle length, 120 degrees. And according to ASUS.com, it has a combo of optical immunstabilization and electronic immunstabilization. Up front, there is an 8 megapixel shooter, f2.0 aperture, AI beauty, and something called Zen Emoji, which can mimic your face and be applied on real-time conversations like streaming, things like that. If you don't believe me about the OIS, I actually took a photo of that. Let's see it. Here we go. Voila, the official site. It says OIS and EIS. This is ASUS.com. These are details about the Zenfone 5. Okay, I guess it's time to access the camera interface. Here we go. Camera app hasn't changed one bit from the Zenfone 4. That's my first impression. Uh, you can switch between the cameras with ease, wide angle or main. You can also take photos pretty fast, pretty rapidly. Let's turn off the flash. Quite fast zoom, but no 2x optical zoom for sure. You can see here the auto identification of a scene that's basically food, considers it to be food. We've got a pro mode, easily accessed, white balance, exposure, ISO, shutter, focus, and reset all of them. And these are the main modes. You got beauty, super resolution, panorama, time lapse auto, pro, gif and slow motion to play with. Also this one here which is basically depth effect or better said bokeh and we can change here the aperture and create a beautiful bokeh effect. This also applies for the front camera and other than that we of course also have uh, uh, 4 to 3 which is the aspect ratio here. Uh, a couple more aspect ratios and more options to find here. Nothing out of the ordinary. Timestamp, watermark, touch shutter. You can film up to 4K. And that's about it for a high mid-range phone. Once again, fast focus, fast zoom, fast picture taking. But it's time to let the gallery tell us the whole story. So, uh, we have a lot of pictures, be advised. Some of them are indoors and they're pictures of uh, East European Comic Con. But I'm going to start with the day time photos. So, I feel that the wide angle shots were a bit too curved for my liking. You can see here regular shot and wide angle shot, but they're excellent for tourists. So, if you're traveling, you can catch more with your lens. But the result will be a bit more curved and also the colors are more distorted on the wide angle lens capture. Now, as far as the zoom is concerned, things are okay up to 2x. If you go 3x or 4x, you'll be disappointed. Speaking of disappointment, when you take selfies, you can see that the background is seriously burned. I know it was a sunny day, but still too much light behind me. Other phones handle that well. And when the selfies do come out, I have to say that the skin texture is okay, the color is okay and the tonality, but the problem with the overexposure of the background may be annoying with your selfies. Bokeh is okay, close-ups are also okay, but every once in a while you get a bit of annoying blur when you're trying to focus properly on a close-up, but still. Uh, close-ups of flowers were excellent in my book, easily competing with the likes of the Galaxy A8 2018, Nokia 7 Plus, Moto X4, and by the way, excellent colors. Pretty okay details, uh, basically I would say iPhone level details, let's say an iPhone 8, but not more than that, doesn't go into the Xperia territory. The greens are better than what I saw on the Huawei P20 Pro, which burned them a bit. Panorama was a bit small at 9600 over 960 pixels, but the curvature was okay. I also felt that the sky is slightly overexposed in the later shots. So let's proceed. Slight overexposure of the sky, slight burn, not a natural view. You can use HDR to correct that or simply not use the wide angle shots because once again, they create strange colors. Just look at this picture here. You'll get what I mean. Very strange way of capturing the skies. Okay, so you probably want to see selfies without the glasses, which may spoil the experience. Once again, everything behind me is burnt by the sun, but I feel that the skin texture, hair texture and color are okay. So overall, not that bad.
The overall experience during the daytime feels pretty much on par with the LG G6 from uh, last year, but with better colors and no burn. Also, it feels about uh, on par with the Xperia XA2, maybe fights on par with the Motorola Moto X4 and feels a bit below the Nokia 7 Plus. So you have to remember that the white camera has a poorer focus, the wide angle camera and also poorer color, so stick to the main one. It's one of those cases when I feel that the dual camera was not necessary, I would have preferred maybe a higher resolution main camera. In the end, below Galaxy A 2018, below Nokia 7 Plus and the equal or above the Moto X4 and the Xperia XA2, that's my conclusion. Those are daytime shots and we also have here some indoor shots i would say that things are reasonable uh, but when things are in motion you will catch some blurred frames that may happen every once in a while it's a comic con so people will be moving around of course we have cosplay we have lots of suits in general the colors were okay in my book also the clarity got a female tour here when you zoom in you'll see that the details are underwhelming not exactly the best tool for a photojournalist, but you can take OK shots provided that subjects aren't in motion, otherwise they're blurred. So these were daytime shots, let's go to the nighttime, see what happened there. I'm talking of course about the low light shots which for some bizarre reason looked a bit better than those taken during the day. I'm happy with the brightness. Um, I'm also happy with the colors, except for once again the wide angle camera colors. The street light halos aren't big, the zoom was quite OK. Okay, let's go further. Once you activate the wide angle camera, things will get hectic, a bit orange, but the street light halos are okay in my book. Nice shots, nice focus, nice lighting, pretty good use of the flash, doesn't exaggerate. Uh, good exposure and the flash is a bit blue, makes the images a bit blue, but nothing serious. It's good for a mid-ranger for sure. We do not have Galaxy S9 expectations here, more like uh, superiority from the Zenfone 4, which was a bit of a letdown in the low light scenery. This feels like a slight upgrade, something like 20 or 30% and that was needed. It's the equal of the Moto X4 during the night, below the Galaxy A 2018 by a bit and also feels slightly below the Nokia 7 Plus uh, again. However, I feel that these photos are a bit brighter during the night compared to those with the Nokia 7 Plus. And also something to show you, I took the same pictures with the regular camera and the wide angle one to see the difference in strange colors. So this is nighttime, 3 a.m., a regular camera, wide angle camera. This tells you everything there is to know about the color calibration of the wide angle camera. In the end, above the Zenfone 4 for sure. I don't want to babble around and dabble around in the main 500 uh, photo area. So I'm going to go to videos. Let's chat about the videos for a bit. So MP4, full HD, 30 frames per second and 20 mega per second bitrate. And I have to say that things aren't actually bad. So things are not bad at all. Pretty solid microphone, nice clarity, pretty swell colors. Okay, zoom up to 2x or so, go more than 2x and you'll be disappointed. There's a bit of grain afterwards. The hue of green isn't bad, something I complained about all the time when playing with the uh, Huawei P20 Pro. Of course, we tested the stabilization, we walked around a bit. Yes, I know the image is a bit shaky, however, there's no refocus and there's no strange flickers. Overall stabilization, not that bad. Feels better than the predecessor for sure. No refocus and no flicker and I'm pretty sure we have a 4K video here somewhere. Okay, so this is the 4K video we're looking for. Pretty nice exposure setup for the sky. Excellent color calibration. So it looks basically like something you would film with a flagship. Although the sky looks a bit odd when you're not focusing on it, if it's in the background, it may get the distorted colors people hate. And a pretty bad behavior with the wind, so if I turn the microphone on, the wind would be crazy. You'll hear that on the desktop for sure. Okay, uh, even more shots, so we have this one here, some ducklings, we also did the slow motion or two. And in some of the shots I felt that the exposure change was a bit sudden. Here another 4K video with a swan and its babies, people throwing grass at it. And also the front camera, I use that, walking around to see if it's a good vlogger's tool. Just like the selfies, it burns the background but keeps the face pretty intact. Texture-wise, color-wise, things are quite okay for a vlogger. 
Okay, so the 4K uh, videos are taken at uh, around 40 mega per second. They're not bad. They're basically the best thing about the phone filming. I would have to say that uh, it's superior to the Motorola Moto X4. Things are less burnt and the equal of the Nokia 7 Plus, maybe slightly below the Galaxy uh, A8 2018. I would even go as far as to say that this phone can even fight the Samsung Galaxy A8 2018 and the video was in general a pleasant surprise on this handset. Except for the cyan sky and maybe some of the strange thing for the selfie filming, things are quite okay. It's also superior to the Xperia XA2 which was not consistent and constant. Now if you want to see some of the videos I've taken at Comic Con, have a lot of them, you can see people gaming, you can see the latest gaming laptops, it can handle bright lights, it can handle the screens, it can handle movement, not bad for a journalist's tool. While the photos were hit and miss with moving subjects, the videos are quite okay. I love the focus because there's a lot of stuff to focus on at such shows and it can handle it. I created the collage of this and I was happy with the results. Okay, so this is daytime and this is also interior now let's go to the low light capture we actually have a bunch of shots here this is one of them it's 30 frames per second in full hd we got big halos we got some artifacts and a bit of softer edges also not the brightest in the world and we just lost a bit of focus also had those stripes which annoyed me back in the days of the zenfone 4 in spite of that things are slightly better uh, last year the zenfone 4 felt buggy it was very dark very yellow had a lot of stripes and uh, this time it's slightly only slightly better something like 10 percent uh this is actually a 4k video if i'm not mistaken which is truly not bad if you want a comparison it's something like you would film with the samsung galaxy a5 2017 that's the vibe you can see now some moving dogs here which would be marching towards me in a pretty creepy experience Okay, so we have uh, several more low light shots. This one is here. Be advised, these are filmed with a 60 frames per second camera, possibly the wide angle one. Not the best in the world, by no means, but they feel a bit brighter. Anyways, uh, a bit better than the Zenfone 4, still no record breaker, still no memorable, a bit better than Xperia XA2, I would say, and okay for a mid ranger. We are done done with the camera in the end just a slight upgrade from the zenfone 4 and not a record breaker for sure when it comes to the uh, web browser you're going to have to use chrome that's the pre-installed one and i'm going to access gsnom.com from this browser if throughout the review you've seen me touching the screen without a response, it may have to do with my dry fingers or lack of electrons, otherwise I cannot explain it. The phone never has a lag, I showed you before, we can do a lot of things. Sometimes the screen acts weirdly, once again possibly because of my electrons. Anyways, smooth scrolling experience in the browser, the keyboard is well spaced and has swipe, and the benchmarks for the browser were, I would say, okay, not more than that. Uh, on the connectivity front, there is USB Type-C at the bottom, there is an audio jack, there is Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, A, C, there is Bluetooth 5.0, Wi-Fi Direct, NFC, GPS, AGPS, GLONASS, there is also Beidou, dual SIM, dual standby with a hybrid second SIM, and also 4G LTE uh, category 12 or category 13, up to 600 mega per second in uh, downloads. Other than that, well, the calls were loud and clear. Uh, we also have something called AI ringtone, which uh, sets your ringtone properly for the surrounding noise. And we also did a bunch of speed tests and let's see how that panned out. If you're not happy with what I did in the video for the camera area, rest assured you'll find more details and more detailed experience in the text review, very detailed on gsnom.com. So here we go. In the speed test, we got to 88.7 mega per second downloads on 4G, 61.8 mega per second uploads, and on Wi-Fi, 280 over 25.6 mega per second in download and upload respectively. Pretty good results on Wi-Fi and also pretty good in 4G. I've seen phones with 90 mega per second, we're close to them, not bad. On the software front, this is a very snappy Android Oreo with Zen UI 5.0 applied on top of it. Okay, so let's see what this Zen UI 5.0 is all about. So you can see here that we got the Google feed with the weather, the news and other things like that. Uh, you can get also customized information and multitasking is done like this. You got a carousel, you can close all the apps if you want to and you can do a bit of split screen, press this or press this and you got Facebook here and you can also have something like play music here. So I can keep scrolling on Facebook and I can listen to tunes. I can also see my gallery 
do other things so split screen and carousel available on the device it's actually free some of the memory press this little booster here other than that well the experience is pretty straightforward we got colorful icons a bit abstract basically reminiscent to the previous zen ui keep the home screen pressed you got wallpapers widgets which are these ones typical for asus very minimalistic with a white contour edit the home screen with options like icon alignment scroll effects icon label colors select font also folder theme and preferences that have to do with the home screen a ton of things to customize layout grid size icon badges continuous home screen auto smart group swipe down gestures lock screen app alert and so much more including icon frames and icon packs the layout involves having or not having the app drawer so that's the experience in a nutshell on the home screens pretty straightforward and this is the lock screen and from what i know you cannot hide the notch drop down section is very white very minimalistic and very clean you got the quick settings here some of them including features which aren't accessible otherwise i'm talking about the fm radio i'm talking about the calculator being here for some reason one hand operation blue light filter and more notifications of course quick settings of course and then we get to the actual settings pretty well organized connection sound battery brightness and finally security security has to do with the fingerprint scanner at the back right here so let me just use it and tweak it it has a pretty long and slightly annoying setup okay i get it place your finger on the fingerprint sensor this is what i'm doing and i will be doing it for about 12 up to 15 times as it tries to detect the tip of my finger voila we are done unlock the device or incoming call lock okay let's see just how fast and efficient it is here we go okay not exactly flagship fast but still pretty fast so it's locked right now put the finger here voila like this come on a bit camera shy okay again so not flagship level but reasonably accurate i would say now you also saw there's another option in case you don't like getting your hands dirty or getting the backside dirty uh, you can give up on the fingerprint uh, remove it and use face recognition finger one delete remove okay so face recognition is a thing no thanks one two three four one two three four register the face which takes oddly long this time it was faster last time i tried it it took a huge amount of time and that was actually creepy turn on face recognition turn of the device turn on okay let's see how this works so power of the device do something like this if it doesn't see your face no bueno okay now let's try it it saw my face pretty fast i would dare to say faster than the iPhone 10 and got unlocked in a minute so if it doesn't see my face it does not get unlocked it doesn't right now and you can see it now it sees it and now it's okay I'm pretty happy with this feature it's working like a champ other things here uh, we got the page marker we got the twin apps which are more than usual usually only if we find Facebook got Instagram messenger play games YouTube there's game genie which I love if you're a gamer and a streamer of Twitch and YouTube we got everything here Twitch account, YouTube account, live resolution, record from your microphone, record your face using the front camera to be a real gamer on the go. Zen emoji is here. You can create a shortcut, show a floating button, see what it's all about, and you can actually trigger it when you're doing a live stream on Facebook. Zen UI safeguard with an SOS feature and report location, OptiFlex, which should do a bit of cleaning among your apps. Kids mode, easy mode, lift to check the phone, screenshot, instant camera, fingerprint gestures, so a swipe down on the fingerprint scanner to pull the notification tray, Zen motion, which is gestures, double tap and drawing symbols, one hand mode, pocket mode and glove mode. Okay, so that's about it. As far as the experience goes, it's time to see how the apps are doing. I counted them. There's 34 of them. Not bad. You got the preferred one at the bottom of the screen. Got Facebook, got your Instagram. You got your SIM toolkit, your Teams, of course, web storage with extra storage in the cloud, YouTube and weather. And one of the most interesting ones is the selfie one, the selfie master, which lets you finally 
access an emoji and I can keep speaking now you can see my face I'm moving my head right now close the eye close the other moving my beak or mouth it's moving at the same time as I am something that we saw on the iPhone 10 in a, in a certain way on the Galaxy S9 uh, doesn't feel as snappy though but it's shareable on Facebook easily okay so that's about it as far as the apps are concerned and I think we have reached the end of the review of the Asus Zen Phone 5 okay so it's time for the pros and cons on the pro side uh, the comfiest 6.2 inch phone I've seen pretty good display uh, okay performance a fast navigation in the menus it's incredibly snappy I have to say it uh, okay PC mark results solid speakers bonus accessories uh, in some countries it's sold with uh, 128 mega uh, excuse me 128 gigabyte card and uh, external battery from Asus a uh, nice bokeh solid colors good low light capture great 4k capture it's actually on par with some of the flagships out there uh, let's see what else we got uh, solid video capture overall uh, pretty nice zen ui custom and clean experience well organized in the interface some ai features here and there fast face unlock those are all the pros now on the cons well there is no way to hide a notch that i know of the gpu was a bit underwhelming uh, video playback time should have been slightly better. I'm talking about the battery life. Also, charging should have been slightly better as well. Now, um, the wide-angle lens is a disappointment. It changes the colors up. It curves the image. It spoils the filming. Not good. Uh, didn't feel any optical zoom. We don't have optical zoom and that's a bit of a bummer nowadays. Some of the pics were burnt. Uh, especially in the selfies, the background. And it's not a big jump from the Zenfone 4 in the camera department overall and the low light capture was a bit poor in the video area not compared to the Zenfone 4 compared to what we see nowadays so this is the Asus Zenfone 5 it was launched maybe too fast after the Zenfone 4 that's the vibe I'm getting from this handset it's certainly the best looking Zenfone so far for sure it's got ai in five features screen ringtone battery the ai boost and also should be one for the uh, ringtone so ringtone selfie battery a regular camera with a scenario and the screen so that's five of them that may be more in the end it's a good mid-range phone don't get me wrong but for 450 dollars you can get maybe an Nokia 7 plus Motorola Moto X4 Samsung Galaxy A2018 which are better rivals in some respects it can surpass the Motorola Moto X4 and the Xperia XA2 and XA2 Ultra in benchmarks but Nokia 7 plus gives it the run for the money it's a pretty phone for sure it's got okay performance it's pretty future proof it's got a good camera and pretty okay battery but just being good and okay does not make you a champion it's a mid-ranger and Nokia 7 plus beats it in my book but I would choose it over the Xperia XA2 Ultra or the XA2 and even the Motorola Moto X4 a bit it's a jump from the Zen 4 4 by a total of maybe 20% max 30 if you include the performance and all that jazz in the end, if the price drops and offers continue, it may become a better offer. This is it from gsnom.com, the review of the Zenfone 5.